So this video is going to be a little different. I've sort of stumbled down this rabbit hole and discovered not one, but two missing hair metal horror movies. Now, one of them is ongoing, and I would go so far as to say it doesn't really count as lost, but the other one's a bit of a cold case. So here's the story. So about two or three years ago, I became aware of a film called Hair Metal Shotgun Zombie Massacre, which sounds like everything I want to be a part of. Unfortunately, at the time, there was almost nothing about it online. There was a trailer and reports that it debuted at Texas Frightmare Weekend in 2016, and even a theme song from Slayer's Tom Araya, which is weird because Slayer is not hair metal, but no mention of a wide release. I did find a semi-active Facebook page, and it turns out that was sort of the last piece of the puzzle, because after a year and a half of radio silence, semi-active suddenly became pretty active. Turns out the version released at Texas Frightmare Weekend wasn't the finished version of the movie. It took four years to get a finished version, which debuted earlier this year at the Cult Classics Convention in Austin, Texas. Incidentally, one of my fans invited me to this, but that was February when I just started a new job and I was trying to move out. I just didn't have the time or the money to drive out to Austin for a horror con. Although, I might have tried harder if I'd known I could finally watch Hair Metal Shotgun Zombie Massacre. But what really upsets me is that they did some virtual screenings and I found out about it three days too late. I at least wanted to watch it, but a virtual screening might even have helped me get some clips for a review of it. Anyways, it's playing drive-ins now, so it's not exactly lost, but it's also not available for home release, so alas, I can't review it. Maybe next Metal Ween. So while researching this film, I came across another movie, Hair Metal Massacre. You can see how the two might have some overlap. Hair Metal Massacre was announced in January of 2013, claiming it would be out later in the year. And there's three different posters for it. Now, it's pretty standard industry practice to make mock-up posters in order to sell a film, especially low-budget films. Hell, that's how we got Friday the 13th, and part of the reason people spent so long looking for a day with SpongeBob SquarePants. But three posters seems excessive. To be fair, one is just a blood-covered hand doing metal horns, which is pretty derivative. But the other two are nice, and the information they give seems to go way beyond just a mock-up. More than one lists Danny Draven as the director, and one credits him and Shane Bitterling as writers. Draven and Bitterling are both known budget writers and directors, notably working for Full Moon Pictures. They even had a company attached, Lucan Productions. The information on them is limited, but it appears they were partially owned by Danny Draven? And like, yeah, it was announced as being in production. But what really draws my attention on this poster is two things. One, the promise of too violent for theaters. So they'd already decided it wasn't going to theaters. And two, an NC-17 logo. It's not just rated NC-17 printed on there, that's a copyrighted logo of the MPAA. That's something you don't really put on your poster until you've gotten an actual MPAA rating, because you might get sued otherwise. And, you know, having an NC-17 rating requires a completed movie. On the other hand, this poster does not list any of the actors, it just says, Starring Metal Gods and includes the line, Featuring the most insane, gruesome, gore-fest metal experience you will ever have in a motion picture. Which, if this movie was complete, why wouldn't it say the actual actors? There's no announcement of its cancellation, but that's not super out of the ordinary for a small film like this. It just seems weird that they promised an October 2013 release, and then we never heard about the film again. I reached out to Danny Draven on Twitter about this, but he never responded. I assume the film went unmade, but I'm curious how far it got into production, and why they claimed to be an NC-17 movie without an actual rating. But it seems like this one's just gonna remain a mystery. So... That's the story of the two missing hair metal horror movies I found out about. 
course, sometimes metal horror movies get released and they're still mysterious. So, uh, tune in next time for more Metal Ween. And until then, have a nice day.